Okay, welcome everyone back to Jews in Sports with your host, Michael Newman, here on HTV in support of JIFoundation.org. Everyone, please visit, uh, as I like to always say, uh, JIFoundation.org slash podcast, but more importantly, uh, to see the foundation's great work with our kids. We take kids with physical challenges through a Spartan race, right? It's really a moment like none other coming up in October with High Lifeline. Uh, where we really do change kids' lives and people uh, to inspire others uh, with these kids' incredible ability to go through this uh, race. As I say, you know, this series really is so unique, diving into the perspective of athletes like myself, where I will discuss with a uh, pro athlete, you know, uh, life's biggest questions. These are our Jewish athlete heroes. Uh, we want to no questions are off limits. We always want to get to the bottom of, you know, what life is about from perspective of, you know, uh, uh, from unique perspectives. So introducing uh, Latia Beck. And before I completely uh, get into who you are and go through your story, I'm going to quickly say you are an amazing Israeli pro golfer. And I am very excited to talk to you because golf is a wonderful parable, parable for life. There's so many lessons we learn in it. And the topic is, first question, you get a quick crack at it, 60 seconds or short answer. How does one bounce back, right? The skill from going from a bogey on the golf course, right, in life, making a mistake to, uh, you know, hitting a birdie to scoring a birdie. How do we bounce back and be able to recover fast and not get ourselves in a rut? I think as a kid, we're always told, you know, just one shot at a time and stay in the present and just not let the past affect you. So, you know, even in a bad hole or a bad shot, there's always the next one to recover. So, yes, if you, you know, keep thinking about the mistake you made or the bogey you made, that's not going to really be good for you. But just, you know, this is a new shot, another shot, and just another, you know, uh, opportunity to hit a great one. So that's pretty much what I try to do. Just forget about the mistake because it happens. And just, you know, keep going. Right. That's definitely the answer. It's easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get mad <that> too. <laughs> you know, I think, I think we'll, we'll discuss it more, but I think we, you know, get so down on ourselves and we believe we're supposed to be upset, you know, I, we've all seen everyone throw clubs on a golf course and just be like, why did you get to that point? But because there's obviously something saying to ourselves that, that, you know, we create these narratives that aren't real, you know, mm -hmm. one, one shot at a time, everything's okay, but we just give up. Yeah. Sometimes it's different in the tournament. In the tournament, I keep reminding myself, there's so many players out there. We're usually 144 and everyone's going to make a mistake. Um, so that's a little different than someone that just wants to break their own record. And, you know, then, you know, it's hard to say, okay, other people are going to make a mistake because it's all about you. But, mis you know, in golf, mistakes are going to happen. And it's just, you know, how can we recover? And, yes, if you make a big mistake, that's too bad. But, like, you know, <laughs> mistakes happen. As, as long as, like, the next shot is, is, is decent, then you're going to be – then we're fine. So. so we'll come back to it because there's a lot to unpack on there. But we'll get into who you are because you're, you're absolutely incredible. In a sense, we'll start off with, you know, you're Israeli professional golfer. Uh, we'll start off with the fact that as a 12-year-old, if I am correct in this, you won the Israeli Open. Is that correct? Yeah, but like before that, so I was born in Belgium. Moved okay. to Israel when I was uh, six, and we moved near the golf course. So I always also say that, like, I think it's also my Bel European mentality uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that the first Israeli on tour is, you know, born in Belgium and doesn't have this, like, typical Israeli, like, mindset. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so moved to the golf course in Israel. My parents play golf. They enjoy it. They're not the best golfers, but they really enjoy it. And I played other sports. And when I was 12, I competed in the, my first Israeli Open. My mom caddied for me. And, and, in a, yeah, and in a playoff, I ended up winning. So that was uh, a time for, like, me to play pick a sport because I was playing more tennis I was more of like fast you know running sport um but golf you know I like was playing twice a week so then when I was 12 I decided to just concentrate on golf and you know play five days a week but it was uh it was interesting yeah to win as a 12 year old <laughs> I see pictures of myself like this tiny uh, kid 
<laughs> you can't believe it, right? I mean, it's like, who was that? <laughs> well, we also have two clubs. I mean, we had two golf courses, so not too many players. So it's not like I was this amazing golfer from a young age. I was okay. Yes, I was a good athlete, uh, right. but it was nothing that like we didn't expect it really. Still, again, as a 12, I mean, in, from as a psychologist, right, 12 year olds, you know, what kids tell themselves and, you know, the, you know, it's still very impressive to hold yourself, especially on a, a very much mental sport to be yeah, able to. It was to... very different compared to the other, uh, especially the girls, um, because that time now we have more girls into sports, but when I was 12, we didn't have a lot of girls that are like into sports. It was more like the boys are playing basketball and the girls are dancing but i was really into you know just running and like being active and good for uh, you yeah. and and it's interesting i it's i just quick point you know very much when you talk to athletes you know there's, there's always like which sport do they pick and the, all the sports that they play always have a lot of similarities tennis you know is there's a lot of you know similarities in the sense that it's you on the court you know, kind of the same swing a little bit, you know, different versions, getting your hips across, you know, type of thing. So I always, I just found that fascinating in the sense that you're usually drawn to a type of sport that requires. Yeah, I had to play an individual sport because all the other sports, I was the only girl and there was like no future. So it was like, you know, I was the only one pushing myself. My friends didn't push me. So yeah, I guess I think that's another reason why I was like into tennis, golf. And, uh, and, and it's, and, and very important, obviously, to push yourself because you are your biggest motivation. You're the person that's going to get it done. So it's amazing skill for you to have moving, moving up to the fact that you then, uh, you know, you play, you played in the, in the British women's open, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Yeah, when I was, I think, 12, uh, 18 was the first time. Maybe. 18. Can you explain to, can you explain to everyone? After, after college for sure was my, First. You were young. <laughs> it's incredible to play. I don't think a lot of people realize, you know, the pressure not of on, you know, the course. Once I think a lot of people actually miss the boat when you get and maybe I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. But when you get to on the course, you know, a lot of people do settle in maybe after the first tee shot or whatever and it's kind of normal golf tournament. Can you explain to us the pressure of, you know, your first you know, you know, uh, major, ma you know, major in golf, you know, the British Open, huge tournament, uh, before gearing up to it, the pressure of like getting there, you know, and, and, and how do you get your mind right for really a, a very insane tournament? <laughs> I think you just have to tell yourself there's a reason why you got there and that mm. you have the game. Um, I think the pressure comes when you start doubting yourself and thinking right. that it's such a big event. But at the end of the day, it's the same event as another, like, it's the same player. Yes, the course might be a little harder because it's a major. But if you got there, there's a reason why. And you just have to keep, you know, reminding yourself and proud of yourself and you know that you have the game. But yes, obviously, it's easy to say that done. Like, I was super nervous. And the first shot, you want to do well because that's, like, the start of the event. And if you don't do well, maybe you start doubting yourself. But yeah, you just have to keep reminding, you know, there's just, you know, one shot, the same shot as, you know, anywhere. And, and you nailed it in the sense that we all have to, and, and I have this as an athlete as well. I get on Spartan race. I was, I got into uh, U.S. National Series and I sat on, on the front and I actually went back into the second row because I didn't feel like I deserved to be there. But I qualified for it. There's no reason, you know, like I'm allowed to be there. I'm allowed to be in the front with all the pro guys. Yeah. And so we do that to ourselves, you know, in life. We just say, no, I'm not supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. So what would you, I mean, how would you overcome that? You know, when I'm telling myself I shouldn't be here to tell me that, to, you know, to get myself right. I mean, it's even for me on tour. The first year I got my LPGA card, the same thing. You compete against the best players and then you're like, okay, right. now you're starting to like change your swing. And it's not just me. It's, you know, you see a lot of players like that. And then they eventually understand that, no, like it's not the swing. Yes, they can get better. And yes, you compete against, you know, the number one in the world. But like, you know, it's, you have the game and it's just about experience, about getting mentally stronger, slowly get better and not like changing, you know, the entire swing. Again, it's easy, you know, it's easy to say it, and I, I've done that mistake. Um, but like we said, it's just reminding yourself that there's a reason why you're there, and then you can make progress, but you don't need to change. You just need to, like, the small things improve. Beautiful point. 
And also, quick note, a lot of people think pros are these incredible, you know, we look at pros and say they do everything right. They, they know what they're doing. And, and to your point, there, there's, you know, LPGA tour girls who are switching their swing for no reason because they're getting pressured. You know, that's, yeah. it's mind boggling, you know? And you have top players, you see number one in the world was, you know, did the best for years since she was like 16 and changed her swing and, you know, struggle. So yeah, there's the pressure of the outside and a lot of pressure from the outside and also yourself just saying, okay, you have to keep getting better. Right. And the key is obviously not to have a drastic change, you know, to improve. I think a lot of people, we love extremism. So, you know, oh, I'm on the big level and the biggest tour. And now I got to change and be a part of everyone. And, you know, it, no, there's, there's, there's a process to things, you know, there's no big, you know, thing you have to be able to work. Example with Rory. I mean, the guy, number one in the world, and he was like dominating and then wanted to get big and got super strong. And then he couldn't, you know, he wasn't the best anymore. So that's another example of like, why do we do that? It's so strange. Right. I mean, although Bryson DeChambeau is, is looking good with his, <laughs> with his bulk and that's something different. He's different. <laughs> the monster. <laughs> I don't know. But, but, it, but again, it is, it, we, we all do it. And I think that's, I think it's a wonderful message for people in a sense that you are normal and you, you know, in all certain aspects of life, you're going to want to do something drastic and change. And you have to take a deep breath and just say, yeah. you know, what can I improve without going nuts? Right. You know, and I think that was a wonderful um, point. Mm -hmm. And then moving, so, so moving on, I mean, to stay in, to unpack the, the experience of the tour, what, what does a, what do you think would be like, just for people that don't know golf, like what would be the number one thing that you would say uh, you need to be successful on the tour? Um, I think in uh, most sports, but golf is very mental because the ball is not mm -hmm. moving. We have so much time in between shots, so much, so much time over the ball. Instead of a sport being very reactive, um, where you don't have time to think as a reflex golf no you have like you have so much time to think you have so much like you can so, like manipulate the shot the swing um the nerves um really matters because every like small movement of the hands like changes the direction of the ball so like mental yeah and then you know the asians are the best in the world in golf and people ask me like why they're so good but like when you look at them like and even if it's like for a shot to win a tournament, I mean, they're completely like, they're so good mentally and like, calm. Right. And, like it just doesn't seem like anything phases them. So yeah, men, like the mental part of the game is extremely important. In golf. You don't need a good swing. You don't need a pretty swing. As long as you can repeat the same thing over and over. Right. For athletes, mindsets, right. You know, before you get, a lot of times people work on for days to get themselves in the right mindset before they even get on the course. So with golf, it's so funny, right you know, uh, to hold that mindset because you have so much time in between mm -hmm. is, is very hard. But people don't realize, like Roger Federer never got upset. And yet everyone thinks when they play tennis, again, with golf, you know, to let it out, smash the racket, throw the club, and it's the complete opposite of what you should be doing. And to some stay people are, you know, some of the best, they do get mad, but obviously the next shot they have to let it go. So, yes, you see people sometimes throw clubs on tour. They don't do it because, you know, they can get penalized. Right. And fine. But they're all good at, like, let, well, the ones that are the best are good at letting go and, like, okay, releasing the frustration. In golf, it's so hard because even if you're super mad or, like, tense, it's, like, you can't throw and you can't swear. And so it's, like, hard sometimes to keep it in. So it's, like, you know, we have to and, like, we have to. <laughs> and and that's the point. But in a, like, calm way. Well, there's ways, there, there are ways of dealing with, with anger, you know, uh, again, whether it's breathing, telling, telling yourself thoughts, things and such. Is there, is there a thought or phrase that you'll repeat constantly to yourself on, on a golf course or no? Uh, I don't really have one yet. Like, usually <laughs> it's more like breathing. Okay. I like calming up myself through breathing slowly. Um, you, do, you do the uh, inhale and then hold? <laughs> Not hold, but... Hold, holding if you hold your breath for I think it's uh, right it's like inhale for three um, hold for like six or seven and then and then out for like ten mm -hmm. gets you lightheaded you get very calm <laughs> but um, I juggle sometimes but that's more when I before I start the tournament <laughs> you juggle yeah 
get gets you into the right cut to calm. It's calm, yeah. You should on tour pack like little marbles and do little juggling oh, <laughs> while you're waiting. I do it with my golf ball. Oh, do you? There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have enough in the bag. So we don't just have one. <laughs> and and that's the point also. It's such a good point to see a pro like you doing little things to help them. People think there's a right way of doing something. That I think it's a it's it's a huge point that we're talking about now. People think you know, whether it's in Judaism, Torah, you know, business, people think because they see things in the media, that there's one way to do something. And I think pros like you show that there's not, you have to do what's right for yourself. People might find that very weird, but that's what to juggle golf balls <laughs> right before big shots. I have pictures. I mean, yeah, anything that helps someone, we're just reminding themselves and like calming themselves and you know, everything is fine. Right. And for, so for example, with golf, right, the, uh, we had talked about it off, uh, off the video, but you know, there's a statistic. I don't have anyone quote me or send me saying that's not true, maybe. But anyway, um, there's a statistic, right, that uh, golfers, I think whatever the majority is, will come back after a bogey. Mm-hmm. So they're able to, you know, so what do you, what do you tell you, what do you do? Whether you've talked about it a little bit now, but what do you do when you hit a bogey? You think, or, or even if you're having a bad round, what happens when you think you're out of it? You know, and what do you tell yourself to say, give myself, let's, let's get back into it. Let's give it a hundred percent because once we're down, we don't want to. Last year, I think it was last year, but like, I was looking at my scorecards during the year and I was like, I was seeing a lot of like, when when I had a bogey, then I, you know, had a birdie right after it's like what you said. I was like, oh, interesting. Um, I don't know. I know. Okay. For sure. When you don't play well in the beginning and then you're like, Oh, okay. I have nothing to lose. You like kind of free up. So that's for sure. Something that happens to everyone. Um, that when they see they're out of it, then they start playing well. They don't care. They start going more for the pins and like they're hitting better shots. Right. So that's pretty much, you know, carefree and like being loose. Um, when you make one bogey again, I try not to, yeah, I get mad, but try you know reminding myself that it's fine like one bogey is fine um as long as you stay in the game and you're, you're going to make more birdies because we make birdies so we know that like mistakes happen obviously it's not fun to make a bogey um but we're going to make birdies throughout the day that one bad hole doesn't really matter so that's kind of like what i how i try to think about it. and that's why i love golf right it's a parable you know one thing is not gonna matter we tell ourselves that it's our big goal and our big dream and then it's just a bogey you have other holes to play and to recover let's get into the cool i think one of the coolest things especially for golf the israeli golfer going to the olympics like come on that's like the coolest thing olympics get takes a break for like what it was 120 years or some stupid thing (laughs) And, and you get to represent Israel. Mm-hmm. You know, can you explain to us, uh, you know, what that moment was like, the pride, the feeling, you know, and, and just what that experience was in general? Because it's... You know, I did tell people that when I was 13, I played my first Maccabi game. And I remember being more emotional there than wow. playing the Olympics. I mean, being from Belgium and then like, you know, my family during the war. And I don't know, when I was when I was in the opening ceremony there, I, th- I think it was like more powerful seeing like all the countries, but knowing that it's like this community and everyone coming together in the Olympics, obviously it's nice. Like the best players are playing there and are there, but I don't know. It's a little different, but yeah, it was nice. It was nice for me to have a team because um, it's like being the only Israeli golfer really on, like, on tour. I never had a teammate. I never had someone. To mm. um, so it was nice for me to go to the Olympics and like, feel like you know meeting more the athletes from israel and it was nice um i i wanted to go to the opening ceremony even though it, the golf was the last week of um, the olympics um i asked them if i can go to the opening ceremony and they said yes which is nice it was like a neat experience the, the- it was weird for me because it's like i'm not the best in the world so i was like do i really deserve to be there but like <laughs> hey we just talked about this <laughs> You you deserve to be there. You yeah. know, you, you got there, right? Yeah. I'm such a perfectionist that sometimes it's like hard to believe that like I, I've done what I've done because I want to do much more, obviously. Right. But uh, it was nice. My parents were there, so it's nice to just fun for me to have them and my brother there. And- I, I think it's awesome to hear that, by the way, just for you to be like, 
you know, I, I don't deserve to be there. You know, like again, it, it's, we all have these thoughts. We're all, we're all humans and it's yeah. wonderful. What made it about just to expound more, you know, again, Israel, it's wonderful and such. Was it the Maccabi games? Was it because it was, it, there was a Jewish sense. There was a yeah. pride there. Yeah. That's like, that's my, like my, like one my main goal turning pro and like I wanted to be represent I wanted I wanted Israel to have representation on tour and that was always like a big part of like I, I wear Star of David everywhere in my golf bag mm -hmm. my shoes so that was really important so, so just since I was a young kid that was like really just um, the community is very important that's why I'm here in Miami because of the Jewish community and I always make sure I'm surrounded people so i think that's why yeah that's why it was more emotional <laughs> and, and i'll ask it only because you know obviously it's important it's a hard question but you know what does what does and i ask it to a lot of people what does judaism mean to you um for me it's a community um mm. like being put into this like one group during world war ii that for me it's like we need to stay together right and um yeah yeah, so every time here, like on tour, and people come to me, they're like, "Oh, we're Jewish." That's like makes my day. Like I just need someone to say that, and I'm like so happy. And my friend knows when I'm like really, really, really friendly with someone, they're like, "Are they Jewish?" I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> um, so I don't know. Yeah, for me, it's like this like community. There's always going to stay this like one group. And and by the way, the whole point of this, uh, the main point of this uh, series is to inspire people through the athletic because sport. We all obviously I, we talked about how sports means so much, um, but you are very inspirational to be at the highest level in golf as a woman, as a Jew, as an Israeli. So it is very inspirational. I would like to be one of those people to be like, thank you so much for being on tour and representing Jews and your values. But and so. You know, got got to send that there to you. I guess one of the last closing thoughts: uh, What would you tell yourself as the twelve-year-old who won? What would you say right now to her about the career path, the Judaism path? You know, the the, the being proud of a Jew path. What what would you tell her? Because she's I'm a pretty proud of this the kid. Because again, my parents never pushed me. I was like the one push myself. Um, so I don't know where I got that strength from. Um, because my parents are not athletes. I don't have family that are athletes. So like that hard work, I don't know from where, maybe my grandparents, but, um, yes, I'm pretty proud of her. Probably I will tell her that like, again, what the talent, like the game that I have is good enough because I always try to fix ever since, you know, I went to high school to a boarding school and it wasn't good enough. And I was like, no, I need to be prettier, the golf swing. And I, and I was always, um, I always needed to be, to, to have more confidence. That's for sure. Um, and yeah, that's like my biggest, I think, struggle since like high school and college and professional is thinking that it's not good enough and always trying hard or harder instead of enjoying the process more being mm -hmm. confident and knowing that I have the game and it's all about letting go and not like putting too much pressure on myself. So I think, yeah, as a kid, I'm very proud of that kid. But like after that, it's like a little bit more of like now it's serious. Now that's my life. That's a job. You know, that's like too serious there. Right. It's like the child mentality. And to impact that a little bit deeper, uh, you know, to enjoy the process. Right. And, and we all say that. And I've said this recently on a different podcast. Like we all were always like, oh, enjoy the journey. And then, and then we don't. <laughs> and then we're upset we don't get to our goal. Yeah, You know, and I, I think it's so great to hear you say that, like, you know, to go from a bogey to a, a birdie is to stop saying that you don't deserve right. to hit a birdie. Mm -hmm. You know, you keep, keep going, keep moving. I'll share quickly that I was supposed to be right in Israel, Ninja Warrior. COVID hit, couldn't get there. Thank goodness they'll have me on next year, hopefully. I mean, they said it, anything can happen, but I should be there. And uh, but I had trained for two months, mm -hmm. killed myself. <laughs> this was my opportunity. So I like, you know, I, 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 my back, you know, so much, I rolled out of my bed and pulled my back because of how much strain I had put on it. And when they said, oh, you can't go on, you know, my initial reaction was, you know, holy mackerel, everything, you know, this sucks. Everything I did was for nothing and whatnot. And then quickly I said to myself, it, it wasn't about getting there. It was about 
the, the journey and you can't be upset because you didn't get to prove it. The experience is there. And so I think that's what you, I think your message is to, to stay calm, yeah. take a deep breath, realize that you are good enough in life and whatever you're going for and to, you know, swing. <laughs> Except the fact that like, you know, you're going to have struggles, but like it's going to happen and just forget about it and fight back. Keep. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I need, you know, I'm working on. <laughs> gotta, pra gotta practice what you preach, right? No. <laughs> by the way, I do, by the way, I do also say when people say, oh, you gotta practice what you what you preach. No. <laughs> we, you know, no, there's the right way of doing it and we have to work at it. You know, no, you're still in the, pro it's amazing to hear that you're still in the process of telling yourself at the Olympics, I deserve to be here. Mm -hmm. when you're a pro at your level doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I, I, I think it's a great message for all of us in life that we doubt ourselves and we are our worst enemies. Right. We, yeah. we're, we're, and this is a game that it's just us, you know, nothing's really bad happening, but we just, it's like the world is ending. <laughs> so we'll end on that note. Thank you so much for coming on and being an inspiration for everyone. Uh, you know, and, and uh, is there any place for people to reach out to you, to, to find you, uh, social media or email or website? I have Instagram. My Instagram is Leticia Beck. Uh, 18 so l-a-e-t-i-t-i-a-b-e-c-k-18 and then facebook as well so yeah go, go, go. yeah everyone everyone please go go over there i've actually seen your videos and stuff they're really cool you know, golf and workout things people yeah. think golf is just hitting golf balls and it's you know obviously when i see your, what i like working out yes yeah, so. <laughs> but it's it's like meticulous working out it's not like like lift like a lot of people work out they think they have to run or whatever you're like doing specific things to work on specific issues and stuff. And it's just cool to see like how detailed you are in your workouts. Detailed, but not detailed. I like also like to vary. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like doing everything, staying active. Right. Right. And, and hitting golf balls. It's always fun to see pros hit golf balls. You know, it's, it's fascinating. It's so cool. Uh, okay. Everyone, please also, uh, as well, you know, the, uh, my Instagram is a Jewish athlete, uh, Thank you everyone so much for listening. I think this was such a wonderful episode where we got to really see amazing things. Take care everyone and see you next time on Jews and Sports. <laughs>